put anything together. And still, you know, you, you getting slides like you never looked like it was hairy. Never looked like oh god, you know, I'll never get done. It was you know. Hey Joe. Hey Joe. Who were the people that you remember that he was close to, you know, 20, 30 years ago at the hospital? Well, he and Austin Weisberg were close. Very yeah. close. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's been gone since 1970. Yeah. Like that. Was it 70 that he died? He was about 60 years old. That's all. Yeah, he was 53. And uh, Oscar Ratnoff was his era. And, he came a little later, I think. But um, let's see, when did I, I asked Oscar when he came. Okay. Might have been around that time. He came, he was first at Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. And uh, he over. Definitely by June. Because it's interesting, I remember seeing him come out of the garage one day. And he didn't have a tie on. I think it's the first time I've ever seen him in my life that he wasn't wearing a tie. He must have been when he was going for therapy or, or treatment. And, and I, I should have picked up that something was wrong, and I didn't. It, it was funny, because usually he had that bounce, and he'd be, you know, determined. He was sort of just walking a little sort of slowly and, and you know, obviously deep in thought about a million things. And it wasn't, it wasn't too soon before, you know, he came to the hospital. That's when you came in I came in 62. Like if Paul Vigneault was a good friend of his. And, uh, I'm trying to think of Harvey that. Dwarf, was it? Harvey Dwork. Oh, yeah. How about Goldblatt or whatever? He was David Goldblatt? Oh, Harry Goldblatt. Harry Goldblatt. Was Goldblatt. Yeah, him, he was before him, wasn't he? Yeah. But did you know Jesse Edwards? was at the Mayo Clinic and he was oh, a cardiac know, pathologist yeah. Yeah. who also used to say, you know, that he knew her well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think also uh, Henry Blackburn. Yeah. Well, he had lots of friends outside the Oh, yeah. Ray Diamond. Sure, sure. sure. Burn dry or dry? Dry. Dry. Mm -hmm. No, well, he was one of the few people this institution who really had the instantaneous international recognition. He just, uh, no question about it, in terms of what prestige he brought, you know, to the, to the school in terms of what he, what he had done. He must have been devoted to stay here. Well, he had opportunity was thinking. In fact, he once thought about going out to San Diego. Right? Ahoya, wasn't it? Ahoya. And why didn't he do that yet? <laughs> <laughs> That's, this is where we would be <laughs> right now. Yeah, we'd be in the lion. Why didn't we do that? I think it was for consideration for his kids. No, I didn't want to move. I was like, do you remember Shumway? No. Sure. Yeah. They, they lived down the street. Kathy was very close to Priscilla Shumway, very good friends. <laughs> I, made a big, I made a big fuss about the idea of moving to California. I thought it was great. But you didn't want to move. I don't think I was the... Uh, the only come one. on. <laughs> <laughs> you would we make move, you pay up. Yeah, that was your job. Yeah, that was fine. I mean, to turn down the best career offer of your life, I don't. That happens. Well, it certainly some, happens now, Kathy. Yeah, some I think when I was chairing the search committee for radiology, for example, it's amazing how many people said, uh, "I can't really think about moving." My my daughter is a sophomore in high school. My son's got a senior year, or you know, I just it would devastate the family to do this. And I'm just not going to move for the next three years. Mm -hmm. 
uh, maybe 20 years ago or 30 years ago, people were less likely to. No, but that, that's different. Wait, they told you that before you made the offer, after you made the offer? Uh, before they would even, no, before they would even oh. uh, consider the so offer. Was they, said, was they, they would say, uh, uh, okay. Dr. Moskowitz, I, I really would, would uh, you know, it's a great place and I, I know it, but right now I, I just don't feel I can look at any place. But certainly uh, there were times when it You'd be wasting your time. Oh. I just don't feel like I can. I mean, make no, no, that's serious. You know? Yeah. Well, we just hired someone at Penn who put off coming to Penn for a year because so his kid could finish the senior year in high school. Right, but it's also like I think the most common excuse you make an offer, somebody says, you know, you, you go through the whole search, you guys. It's a polite way of calm. saying no. And then, you know, and then you make the offer, and then he says, oh, you know, well, this is why this besides, you know, she steps in, my wife put her foot down, I can't. Well, that happened. Boy, that, that, no, it, you know, it does happen, but it I think also the most common. It happens in San Francisco or in Boston, or, you know, right. where the wives don't want to, where the husbands don't want to leave. I had one, we were looking at an affirmative action, and I called up this uh, 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 black uh, radiologist at Penn, right. at Penn, as a matter of fact. And she got a kick out. She says, I'm sort of the one they always call. Yeah, and I'm the I'm highest the ranking one nationally. Yeah. And her husband was a dentist. And he said, I, you know, he can't leave his practice. So I really, you know, can't afford to look because uh, I'm not going yeah. to ask him to do that. So they uh, do get but, but going back to, to whether Herman moved or not, we used to talk about this. And in a way, he, he was, he used to say that, that he was, uh, more coveted outside of reserve than he was at reserve, you know, that oh, uh, definitely. That's what the expert's the man from out of town, the sure. person from out of town. And we, we, we were talking about this because in a way I, I, I did the same thing, you know, where I would be going out and speaking or writing. And I sort of, he didn't get involved in the local politics, so he didn't care about what was happening here. He could live here and use this as his face. He didn't need to move. He would be doing the same thing, I think, whether he lived in San Diego or whether he lived in Boston. He would still go be in Bangkok lecturing or China or England or France, where you know, it didn't matter to him. You know, he was writing his books, he was doing his research, he had his lab. He, he, you know, he really didn't need to... Uh... Mom, was the position in, at La Jolla, wasn't that um, more administrative? It's like chief of cardiology, isn't it? <laughs> The university that was connected with it was just getting started, and yeah, there were lots of politics. There was a lot of. He would have started the department. He would have hired everyone. I'm not sure, but. How long ago was it? This is when you were 10. <laughs> okay, you don't have to tell us exactly. 10 years ago. 55 years ago. <laughs> years ago. We all know how old everybody is. <laughs> we we got that all figured out. <laughs> then he looked at something in New York once. In the city. Uh, I've got in my house. I thought you had an offer more recently from UCLA or some place. Like, maybe not. Well, if we would have been speaking with a different accent, we would have gone to New York. <laughs> Let's see, what else were we looking at? Trying to imagine our family living in the yeah, Yankee fam? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> At ten. You well, David lives in Manhattan, doesn't he? Pardon? Isn't David in Manhattan? What? He used to live out there. He went to the suburbs. Where's he now? Oh, okay. You know, right outside the city. You know. uh, is he still doing psychiatry? Yeah. yeah. And writing. His book will be out in the spring. It's called The Family of Doctors. This is about the family? About our generation, yeah. parents' generation. Their parents' generation. Their parents' generation. Six generations yeah. or five six, generations? Six generations. Well, I think he tried to bring in his. He found. He found. Uh, hundreds of American here. I don't remember how many cases. The dean of the medical school was um, this Marcus Rosenwasser. He was an obstetrician and had studied how many cases? I forgot. He said 12. Now, Rosenwasser was who? Rosenwasser was your great great, great uncle. Great uncle. Oh, wasn't he Edward Rosewater's brother? Yeah, so he's yeah. your great uncle. And he studied in Vienna, probably. Uh, Prague. 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 Yeah. 
And his brother put him through medical school. Yes, his older brother. Yeah. That's what David was telling me. That's right. Who uh, was a telegrapher during the Civil War and was one of the telegraphers that sent out the Emancipation Proclamation. Really? And then he started a uh, newspaper, the Omaha Bee. Or had it been... Yeah, he started that. He went west in a covered wagon. So really? From the time of the covered wagon. <laughs> to jet set. <laughs> so, but the brother here, the one who became the dean, kept his name. He didn't, he didn't Americanize, he didn't Americanize it. it. And he, worked and he was here at reserve at the one who's at Ohio Wesley and our was yeah, the was beginning of I the <laughs> Several medical schools joined together. And and Herman had a chance to read. was one of his friends. Kyle, Kyle Senior right. was in that group of okay. teachers. Okay. Well, have you read the manuscript? Parts of it. Dad read it. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's part of the piano. Yeah. Wait, you're not allowed to read that. <laughs> she might leak. She might leak some of the. I would say what? Most probably. Yeah. I'm to cry. <coughs> pair, you know, OB at that time with OB. Yeah. Okay. But, but their results then were pretty good. Uh, yeah, amazing. He had Without some. Any they didn't keep the cases them. where the results worked good. Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. They didn't write those out. Right. Right. Those, those are the outliers. Right, right. You think right. there were only 12,000 patients. There were really another 25,000 that have been destroyed. <laughs> Well, death, death of childbirth was very Many families, I know in our, when we look back through our, you know, there were second wives, more, more kids, because the well, your original mother, mother yeah, grandmother died. died. Rebecca Solovetsky Liger died in child. I think so. That's yeah. that's what he said. Yeah. yeah. Twenty six years old or yeah. something. No, she must have been a little bit older than that. Because or was Celia was was that Nana's mother? That was maybe there was Nellie Rosewater Elgutter, who she was probably about no, she was about twenty one or twenty two. She was just back from Cooper Union. Yeah, she was in her early twenties. Back from art school. Yeah, and but. But my father's grandmother must have been a little bit older because his mother was 16 when her mother died, and or maybe she was a little bit younger than that even. But her but her father remarried and a young a woman who was a young girl who was her contemporary. And they didn't get along. And she left. She ran away from home and came to America. The so stepmother was the stepmother was, was, was her contemporary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to drink some? But Tanya talking about that, you know, with all the physicians in the family, Here, John. discussing, you, want to tell you know, me? why people go into medicine, or you know, or what, why did you decide to go into medicine? So many doctors, families, like my son Josh, really, I don't think he's interested in, in going to medical school, and I'm not pushing him to do it. Uh, but where is he in college? At the University of Michigan. He's a and sophomore. He'll be a sophomore, and he's, you know, he's taking courses that will give him yeah. the flexibility to go either way. But he's not really, you know, sort of, gee, I want to be a doctor. And uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who's the dean at Temple now, Alan Myers, and he has three children, none of whom are physicians. We're discussing, is it because, you know, Josh worked at the hospital for a month, two summers ago. And I said, what was it like, you know, saying dad as, as a doctor? He said, dad, so all you do is sit at the phone all day and, and answer phone calls and, you know, uh, deal with secretaries and, and dictate and things. And you know, is it a difference in terms of what you you see at home or what you talk about? Uh, you know, when, when doctors were do were doctors 50 years ago, and they came home and they talked about Mr. Jones did this, or they got called out in the middle of the night. You know, I, I might as well be a stockbroker for for all that the children get out of what it is to be a physician. 
I mean, they don't see me as, as really uh, saving lives and stamping out disease. Would I mean, you see it as a, you know, I mean, where did you get your... But they didn't see you teaching a patient at their bedside no. or something like that. So maybe if they saw that... Part, it, no, they, they might have. Yeah. You didn't, did you do that with your dad? Or? Yeah. Well, I was in the operating room with him a bunch of times, and he told me, there's only one crucial rule when you're in the don't operating room. The when you faint, fall backwards, not forwards. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you decided not to pursue a career in medicine. Because I was felt like I was going to fall, fall forward. forward. <laughs> Actually, the, the the funniest story was uh, was was he had me working on the Shaker Heights. Uh, study in school kids and stuff like that and I was drawing bloods, phlebotomists. Right. How old was that? Maybe 15 or 16 years really? old, I think. About 15, big enough to still be down and draw my 16. Yeah. And so, so anyways, it came down to, I drew all the bloods and then it came down to my dad said, well, you know, why don't you practice on uh, Danny and Susie before you were going to oh, draw no. bloods. And so, I drew Susie and everything went okay, and then I was drawing Danny. And Danny <laughs> made it like a log. He was out like a log. The and prelude uh, was to chase you around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Came out a big meal. So and ran so you're punched to the groin. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, my dad's uh, reaction was, he says, he said, I said, Dan, why'd you paint? He goes, well, the sight of blood. He says, it's my own. <laughs> it makes me faint. And uh, my dad says, oh, he's going to be a surgeon. Remember that, Danny? That was a big needle. that <laughs> We got out the horse needle. <laughs> for just for you, Dan. No. Dan, how are you enjoying it down in Jacksonville? Oh, you're probably feeling some of the same types of pressures around the university. Your career is starting to become more of a job. Yeah. The bottom line is more important than what you deliver. And the measure of the product is patient satisfaction, not with what you do. It's, do, you get enough, do you get too many complaints? The patient's waiting line, waiting room. How quickly can you process them? Can you send them through the checkout line like they do at Sam's Warehouse? Or can you give them what they really need? There's sort of a mixed message coming out of the mail what they want. The foundation would like to keep their million and a half dollars and keep their old style carriage trade medicine. The reality is that they are going to go up against groups of larger size, two, three, four, five thousand physician groups who are going to be outcome oriented. They're not going to hold hands or not going to order many tests. We're going to say you have a headache, it's a headache. Don't worry about and it. And you're getting per capita payment, you, you really, you're getting your thousand bucks a person. Capitation will destroy the economy. Yeah. They're not efficient at all. It's the last thing that they, that they would be good at. Really? You know, because I spent four years there. They, they were fairly efficient at Rochester. I think it may be different. Well, they're efficient at handling patients, yeah. but the gear is toward diagnosis. And every neurologist I talk to, every internist I talk to, you talk about spending an hour, an hour and a half with right. a patient, which is silly. Right. I think that's really silly. I mean, it's nice to do that, but four years of college, four years of medical school, you're wasting your time. Somebody should interact with the patient. They need hand-holding. Get a warm individual, male or female, who can relate to patients and maybe take a history or maybe interact with the patients and hold hands a little bit. And then who's ever going to make the decision? Make the decision that way. They're not spending an hour and a half because uh, it's not going to be a viable problem. They, they're cutting surgeon's fees, and surgeon's yeah. fees ran Mayo Clinic. They can basically yeah. give the other care away free, and they're cutting the salaries down, cutting the not the salaries, they're cutting the reimbursements down. And it's going to be necessary for some of the lesser productive groups to become more productive. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to turn that little wrench volume. faster and answer volume. The CEO at, at uh, Jacksonville talks about volume. He talks about putting people through the system, putting meat into the grinder. You have to get it going. You have to get it through. Whether it means 
staying open later and working Saturdays or having some other flexibility or so going to electronic medical record, it's going to be volume. And you're going up against people who are very good at volume because they don't give them the right. carriage yeah. trade, hand holding medicine that may have a use for them. And so it's a real dichotomy. Is it going to be stay alive and support from the foundation and not deliver a viable product? Or is it going to be bottom run, acceptable medicine, acceptable by practice guidelines, mm -hmm. acceptable by ICFA or Medicare or whatever it might be? So I think that there's a great de uh, deal of tumultuousness right now. They're trying to feel where they belong. I think it's probably happening in medicine in general, though. That you know the pressure is there to compete and to you know grind out quality product for the cheapest price. And at a certain point, quality has to suffer because you can't keep underbidding, underbidding, underbidding without cutting to the corner somewhere. The last final analysis is that time equals money. Yeah. So you have to spend less time. Mm -hmm. Until you say that this is the place where you can't you can't squeeze this anymore, and right. you have to as professionals. Technology set has those to replace guidelines. some of the human element too. <coughs> sure. Or you get people who are just <coughs> nice people and who don't have big education suitcases in their back pocket. Mm -hmm. They have to. Mm -hmm. Or what you do is you well, do. You, you see all these sort of like visit. I mean, you know, we go to a family medicine practice, which is sort of expanded like tenfold in the last seven years. But you never see doctors anymore. You yes, see these physicians. Well, the other thing is you, you, you really get poor medicine. You know, I, I give enough lectures or, or yeah. do enough teaching in smaller communities. And uh, some of the medicine is very good, but most of it is, I mean, you sit there and you, it, it, it's frightening to think that somebody's actually getting medical care in that community and what they get. And a lot the of doctors the are from these nurse practitioners. Physicians, physicians. Oh, physicians. And it, where they, have, for example, they, they'll do all the room. I know best about rheumatology, obviously, but they'll take care of all the patients with arthritis, and they don't really have the faintest idea what they're doing. And if it doesn't work, we'll try this. If it doesn't work, we'll right. try this. So the cost is really much higher. Right. Uh, you know, they may charge less for an office visit than I do, but it may take them 20 office visits right. to finally, you know, sort of luck on right. The, uh, right. you know what they want to do. And yeah. and they're they're out to to the reason that, that Clinton's doing what he's doing is because they're really milking the system. Uh, I, I was talking to one uh, physician who was a family practitioner, and he, he would just trim calluses. And he would call that uh, uh, that was uh, re surgical removal of a hyperkeratotic lesion. Oh, you know, it was 85 bucks, you, you know, right. for three seconds of cutting down a count. And he was proud of how he had, you know, sort of, you know, gone through a different code to, to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think that, uh, <laughs> that picking a skin. with, the use, with yeah. the use of computers, that things like taking a medical history and stuff like that, that you can get 90% of it on a self? I find I do a lot better when I do it myself. You know, it's, it's, it's the nuances yeah. you pick up, the question you wouldn't have yeah. like being in the lab. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can have a PhD yeah. doing work for you all day long, and you're not going to do the same kind of research that you are if you're in the lab doing it yourself. And I know it because I'm not there doing it, and I know that I miss things that they're not going to pick up that, you know, you, you're, you're thinking about the same way, you know, the, the fellow takes the history and you read, oh yeah, fine, and you really don't ask that extra question, or you don't see the patient walk and say, gee, how long has this been bothering you? Well, it becomes uh, a fact once it's writ written uh, down, but when you hear it, you hear a question or a voice or something. Exactly, exactly. A headache is, that's why I don't do well on CPC. Because it's too cold, it's too sterile. You know, somebody says they have a headache and a rash. Headache can be a, any of all different things. Somebody says I have this terrible headache and sore over here. It's different than I have this terrible headache and it's just like a pressure around my head. And if you don't ask the right question, you're going to do it. It's sort of an, I, you'd like to think of would work, but um, I know uh, one pediatric group that does that, and because they're scheduled for a new patient every 15 minutes, they don't ask questions beyond unless the patient writes down that they have questions. No, don't go back. No. It's sort of like what I don't know that you want to know. I'm not going to ask you. So. The fortunate thing is most people survive that. even without right. the despite extra. medicine. Despite yeah, yeah, and despite not asking the questions. Uh, knowing okay. about. 
What was it my dad used to always say that when there was the strike of physicians and... More people, the, the death rate goes down. <laughs> in, in Israel, wasn't it? I that's think that right. was a famous... That's right, the death thing. rate goes down. Because that's because fewer people go to the hospital, there's fewer surgery. Um, well, these were the generation in, in, this, in this particular medical school class. Oh, oh, the, the, the class group that itself. used to go to different classes, you know, Metro yeah. and well, City Hospital and Charity Hospital. Yeah. And, you know, you used to do it, George. You travel by car, usually one person had a car, yes. and everybody, five or six people right. would go together. Nobody else had a car, but in those days, anyway. Well, he used to tell the story about when he was going, and uh, they never wanted him to drive because they'd be in a conversation. <laughs> he'd be driving. <laughs> 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 I believe that. <laughs> and he'd forget. Thank you. He'd be forgetting that he was driving. <laughs> and then the other part is, is he didn't want any of his patients to know this, but there was this uh, pie place down on what was it, Carnegie or? Carnegie or Chester? Yeah. Carnegie. Yeah, it's Carnegie. It's called Royal Rio. Royal Rio. And he said, it's no, no, pies. no kidding. He said the pies were this hot. <laughs> <laughs> and they would, they had a deal going where they'd buy day old pies. Seconds. Seconds and eat it in the car going over to the <laughs> hospital. Pecan. <laughs> Pecan. <laughs> And then I think he liked banana cream too. Uh, You're pretty wet, Jonah. Uh, That's not. Did you have, a, did you have <laughs> an accent, Jonah? Did he watch his dialogue? Pardon? Did he watch his dialogue? Oh, yeah. yeah. Was it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. We, uh, we got lectures at the family oh, gathering. Oh really? Oh yeah. Well, what about the visible and invisible who, eggs? It's my dad. Who's using butter? And who's using margarine? And skim milk. Skim milk. Yeah. One percent. I don't think they had one percent at that time. They just skim. had skim or regular. Powdered milk. But it came up. Two percent. Every time we got together. Well, my, my mother smoking? wrote the cookbook, Gourmet, Gourmet Cooking, Cooking for the Cardiac, cardiac Diet, diet. In the 1950s. Yeah, with my father. Right. And they, yeah, it was good. Yeah, the recipes still pretty good, even if you want to. Some of them were using lanolac. In those days, they put them on very low, very right. low salt diets because that's all they right. had to control blood pressure. They didn't have all the yeah, heard that they put in here. The lanolac. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot that? of her recipes use lanolac. Like That's a low, milk. very low salt milk. Oh, milk. So if you added milk to a recipe, you didn't use regular milk, you used lanolac. If it was a low salt. Oh Jonah, no. But um, for the fire side. Right. Right. I didn't remember when they came out. You could still take the recipes and make them more yeah. modern ingredients. Diarrheal and hydrodiarrheal. When did you face medical school? 1950. You should, you must have it. The cookie. Kendall and Hans came. And they were in 49. Yeah. yeah. Spoke to us. Is that right? I had already agreed. Right. Well, I was thinking, you talk about, you know, having medications, because I remember when I was in medical school, we had about eight drugs, we, you know, you had mercury, hydrogen, digital asleep, you had uh, aminophilin, rectal ether for asthma attacks, you know, nothing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. That sounds like that was real pleasant to administer. Let's <laughs> <laughs> take a deep breath. <laughs> 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 Nobody goes to sleep. <laughs> Saudi tubes and uh, you wouldn't want to have those are the days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a pain in the you know what. You wouldn't want to have a lot of things in those days. <laughs> leeches, we still use leeches back in those days. Flaxseed pulse. Right, right. Saudi tubes, you put tubes in, the, you get draw the fluid on. Well, nothing like a good bloodletting to give you a little energy. <laughs> that's right, anymore. that's right. <laughs> Actually, they're using this for plastic surgery flaps what? and things, leeches. That's right, leeches, leeches and cream, yeah. Uh -huh. To degrade them, yeah.
medical issues. Is that, you uh, put the medical <laughs> in front of the right, ultimate right, thing, right? Right, it costs a lot more. Right. Right. Sterile <laughs> medical leeches. I don't know they call it. Right, they call it the therapeutic uh, phlebotomy. Well, aren't they That's using, right. aren't they using all sorts of animal products, pig skin for the heart valves and oh, yeah, well, all that sort of stuff and synthetic uh, animal arteries that they stripped and I thought they had a process where they took uh, arteries out of pigs and then put it through some sort of process. These vessels, 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 vessels and Teflon and Plasti-Tac on Vortex. To um, an old Polish pediatrician who had had a bad hip and as a child, so she, this was, she escaped from the Nazis so many, many, many years ago, had an artificial hip from uh, a cow inserted. Oh, you ever no. heard of that? No. And was not doing all that well. But it was <laughs> many years later. She had survived many years anyway. <laughs> she hobbled around. <laughs> but she'd survived for many, many years. I think it would have been a bad idea. Yeah, you know, in those Something. days before you had, you know, prostitution, yeah, I guess they, that. Well, cows are heavy, so I mean, they when she heard the big bell, she always <laughs> went towards the barn. <laughs> right. And, uh, well, it'll be you know hard to get used to him not being being there. When do you go back? When you Sunday, Monday, Monday Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have your? Did you get your ticket? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. What time do you go? Twelve thirty. Okay. Hey, George, you're going. What time do you go? Twelve thirty tomorrow. It's a big oh. group. Going. Oh. Or is Susie I'm going? Twelve thirty. When are you going back? Eight fifteen. Eight oh, thirteen. I'm popular right. time. Right. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm the. I'm unique. Right. <laughs> Where do you go back to? I'm going to Boston. I was on Cape Cod on vacation. And flew she was part of the Clinton <coughs> delegation. I was going to say, she Clinton is up there now. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, my sister actually is an emergency room nurse on Martha's yeah. Vineyard. So, if the hopefully, yeah, if there's any problem, Chelsea gets they'll get called. Chelsea yeah. gets sick. <laughs> for, for a splinter. Well, yeah, right. Yeah. Or if Bill pulls a muscle Doesn't playing he take golf. Doesn't doctor with him? He probably does. What's her, what's her dog? She thing? said they hadn't sent any blood. Uh, oh, really? I thought that they did that routinely to the hospital. That's what, did he drop not. blood off every month? And so it just... <laughs> <laughs> if, if Sox ah, scratches Chelsea, question. then they'll end up in the emergency room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can't scratch you. <laughs> but anyway. So if I fly back to Boston, and then I live in Providence. Never saw him. Yeah. Can't scratch you. What? I said, I never saw any cat yeah. scratch fever. I read about it, right. heard about it, I had a look for it. Right, otherwise, I wouldn't have known about it. It's a long time, long time. So they don't have... Well, I saw a lot of tick marks. Yes, but I wasn't yeah. in Providence. From, uh, I was on Camp Todd. Oxygen and spot of fever. Did you? No. But you can fly from Boston, you fly from Boston. Did you? The BCO says, right? I had never heard of oh, it about two years ago. So they put up as a CPC in the medical medicine. Yeah, with hemorrhoid anemia and fever. Yeah, that's I don't know. Oh, you don't know? No, no. Ronnie's driving. He's driving now. He's driving up from Providence, right. and then we drive back down. Well, there wasn't any good speaking to now. Oh, nice. This was just total yeah, yeah, I haven't yes. seen her in a, in a year, but this is it. So well, she said I pick her up in New Bedford. Excuse me, the two folks. There's a ferry from Martha's Vineyard that goes there. I'm not sure what they call me to say hello when she comes back to the hotel. Daddy, look who I have on my night. Thank you. I don't have any events. I'm going to go to the hotel. David, my sympathy is very proud of your dad, obviously. Thank you very much for coming. Well, I. Two years in. So tomorrow's a busy day. Thank you. Now when you call you, here it is. Here it is. He was on Michigan, Saint Ann Arbor. I was looking around. I thought maybe I was. Yiddish, of course. Language or literature. 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 You were very concerned. Yiddish, of course. Language or literature. It's wonderful. What is it? He dropped a quarter. That's one of those little 
little obsessive thing. You can read Hebrew, though. It's like a habit of going to really care about. Right. Like quarter meant something those days. Right. I'm mentioning that he loves these five things. Well, I hate to even pick up the change, you know. Someone's giving me change. I'm like, proselytize. Why bother? Bye bye. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'll be in touch. Right. Where's your pocket? It's a thing. You can read Hebrew, though. It's like a habit of going to really care about. Right. That quarter meant something right. those days. I'm mentioning that he loves these five things. Well, I hate to even pick up the change, you know. Someone's giving me change. I'm like, why bother? Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'll be in touch. All right.